Hi, somebody contacted me a few weeks ago and sent me a picture of something they'd seen on Pinterest. And it was a kind of layered little scene, something like this. Now, I deleted the video by accident, so I'm not exactly sure if this is what the person wanted. But in today's video, I'm going to show you how I created these layers to go on the front of this card. I'm going to be using Scan and Cut Canvas and I'll show you how I created the layer shapes and the little house and tree shapes. OK, so I'm in Scan and Cut Canvas and I've got a new blank page opened. Now, the front of my base card is going to be five and a half inches wide by four inches high. So the first thing I'm going to do is come over to the basic shapes and I'm going to get a rectangle and I'm going to make it that size. I'm not going to cut this. This is just going to be my guide for the size of when I start to create my layers with my welded shapes. So with this rectangle selected, I'm going to come to the properties box. I'm going to untick the maintain aspect ratio. I'm going to make it four inches by 5.5. And as I say, that represents the front of my card. Now with that selected, I'm going to right click and hit duplicate twice. This first rectangle, I'm going to leave it at five and a half inches wide and I'm going to drop the size down to about 1.75. Now obviously these measurements are not vital, I'm just showing you how I put my card together. You can create yours in any size you want. If you want your layers narrower or higher, just you know, alter your adjustments here. So that's the first one. And then the second one I'm going to bring in, and I'm going to make this about one and a half. Now again, I might adjust these slightly. I, may, I might make this one slightly taller. I don't know yet. I'll see how it looks in a minute. So, just so that you can hopefully see them better on the video, I'm going to choose this first one and I'm going to make it green. And I'm going to choose this second one and make it red. And hopefully when I layer them up on top of this rectangle here, you might be able to see them better. So this is the one that's one and three quarter inches high or 1.75. So the first thing I'm going to do with it selected, I'm going to click on it again I'm going to right click on this top node which will select this line and then by doing that it brings up the node editing box here and you can see that it says that the line that's highlighted is a straight line. So I'm going to click on the drop down arrow and change it to a curve and instantly it gives me two handles now that will help me manipulate this line. So the first thing I'm going to do is drag this left one up and then this right one I'm going to drag down to give me a curved line. And if I'm happy with how that looks, I'm just going to left click on the, play, on the page anywhere to deselect. Now I'm going to come to this one, select it, click on it again to expose the nodes, left click on this top right hand corner node again to get this line. And again, it says it's a straight line. I want to make it a curve. And then this time with these handles, I'm going to use these handles to do the opposite to what I did up here. So with the left hand handle, I'm going to drag this one down. And then with the right hand, I'm going to take that one up. And I can take this line in or out depending on how much curve I want. And then if you see, if I line these up together, It just, it just gives the curves going in opposite directions. Now this red one, I want this curve to be lower. So I'm going to select it to expose the nodes. I'm going to drag this handle down to make it lower. And then bring this one in a bit more. And then I'm going to left click anywhere on the page to deselect. And I'm going to put it back over there. Now what I might do with this one, I might just make this ever so slightly taller. So I'm going to select it and then just hovering over this 
blue circle in the middle I'm just going to drag it up a little bit just to make it a bit deeper I'm not altering the width and see how that looks now I might drag this one down a little shrink it down a little I want this red arc to be just under this green arc here so I'm happy with those so they are my two layers now at this point you can use anything to create your shapes you could find some free copyright clip art and bring that into scan and cut canvas and use the auto trace button here and create a cutting file from that and I've shown you how to do that in previous videos if you go and look in the canvas playlist you'll find an auto tracing video you could um, use dingbat fonts I've shown you how to use those you could look for a dingbat font that's got little shapes that you want to use and again look on in the playlists under the fonts video but for this particular video I'm going to use shapes that are already here in the basic shapes so I'm going to scroll down and I'm going to find this arrow here so I'm going to select this arrow and then I'm going to hold the shift key down and I'm going to rotate it so it's vertical. Then the next thing I'm going to do is find this tall, thin triangle and I'm going to duplicate that while it's selected. Then I want an arch shape so the next shape I'm going to come for is this one here. So I'm going to select that. And again, I'm going to hold the shift key down. I'm going to rotate it so it's vertical. Then I want a circle. And an oval. And the oval that I chose was this thin skinny one. So again, I'm going to bring that on, hold the shift key down and rotate it. And just by holding the shift key down, it keeps it completely vertical. Then the last thing I want is another rectangle. So I'm just going to go for this thin rectangle. Again, I'm just going to hold the shift key down and rotate it. I'm going to size it down and then I'm going to shrink it in till it's nice and skinny. And then I want one more shape and that is this rounded, I would like the rounded corner. So that one. So I'm going to place this green rectangle with the curve just over what effectively is my guide as my base card and then I'm going to get this arrow shape now which looks like a house and I'm going to drag it down until I think I like the look of the proportion on the card I might need to make it because it's over two inches high so I think I need to shrink it down a bit more and I may drag it out to make it a bit fatter and I'm kind of happy with that in relation to this layer here and the actual overall size of the card. So I'm just going to bring it off there for now. I'm going to get this square with the rounded corners and I'm going to drag this down nice and small and bring it over this house shape. And I'm just going to zoom in on here to hopefully see it better. Now that looks too big in relation to the size of the house so it's just under a quarter of an inch so with that one selected I'm going to create a duplicate then with one selected I'm going to hold the shift key down and select the other and I'm going to go to edit and align them up on the bottom edge and while I've got them both selected I'm going to make them a group then I'm going to right click and duplicate them then with one set selected, I'm going to hold the shift key down and select the other set. And then I'm going to go to edit center and that centers them to themselves. Now I'm happy how that looks. So I'm going to drag an imaginary box around everything. 
these squares are on top of the house so I'm now going to go to edit and subtract and that will punch these window shapes out of the front of this house so I'm now back on view fit to mat and that's my first little house shape which I'm going to position about here just for now now on my original card I think I actually used another one so I'm just going to go and find that arrow again hold the shift key down and rotate it I'm going to shrink it down and squash it in so it's tall and thin then I'm going to get this shape here and again I'm going to shrink this down and squash it in and I'm going to position that over this shape here now I think I made this slightly narrower or slightly less tall so I've just I'm going to click on this arch here and it's selected the whole of the house shape so I know that's on top and I don't want that so I'm going to right click and send it to back left click anywhere on the page to deselect and click on this arch again and now that's on top so with those two on top I'm going or with that on top I'm going to go to edit center and then I'm going to go to edit subtract and that should punch out this arch window shape out of this bigger house shape and again I think I need to make it a bit smaller I'm going to bring this one so it's a bit higher and bring this one just next to it might actually make it even smaller you just have to play around this is all I did when I made my original card now when I select this you can see down here it's over one and a half inches high so I'm just going to shrink it from the bottom and then put it back I want it to be kind of smaller than this one now with these two triangles selected I'm going to go to edit center that centers them together and I'm going to go to edit and weld and this becomes one of my tree shapes now again I'm going to size it down and I'm going to squash it in now this is over two inches high if you look at the measurement down here but again I'm just going to leave it for now because I'm going to bring the red layer in and put that in place and then I'm just going to bring this over and see how it looks in relation to everything else and I think I can afford to make it a bit bigger with it selected I'm going to create a duplicate and with the duplicate I'm going to make that smaller and position that just next to it so all as I'm doing at the moment I'm not welding anything together I'm just trying to get myself an idea of scale really then for my little trees, again I just did exactly the same. So I brought the circle down and I brought the oval down to the sizes that I thought would look in proportion to the rest of the card. And then I'm going to create a duplicate of this because this is going to become the trunk of my tree. I'm going to position that over there but I'm going to have to make it a little bit narrower. I'm going to select both, edit center and then edit weld. Don't worry that this is going to be too long because we're going to weld it to one of these layers in a minute so it won't matter. Then I'm going to put that one over the circle, select both, edit, center and edit, weld. Now I'm going to put these in position but I'm not going to do anything with them just at the moment. Now again this one's like nearly two inches high so I can afford 
to shrink that one down and then this one I want to put in position and maybe make that one a little bit taller and just see what I think I'm not sure may have to move these over a little bit and I may want to shrink that down So when I'm happy with how I think it all looks, the first thing I'm going to do is select this red rectangle and move it out of the way and select these two trees because those are going to be welded to the red layer and these other four shapes are going to be welded to the green layer. So I'm going to select my guide base card and move it out of the way. Then I'm just going to select everything here that's on the top and go to Edit Weld. Then I'm going to bring this one in and layer it up so that the edges line up on the bottom and I'm going to bring the trees in, put them back into place and then I'm just going to select the trees and the red rectangle so if you're unsure just move that one out of the way, select these and go to edit weld. Now when I layer all these up together, I'm just going to line them all up, I'm going to select everything, go to edit, center, edit, bottom, and then they'll all line up together and click away and you'll see that's created my scene for the front of my card. And then all as I did was separated the two layers I don't need this, this was just a, a visual guide to, to the size of the, the actual base card I'm going to use so I can delete that, give it a name up here and save it into your projects and then send it over to your scan and cut machine and cut it. Once I, or before I assembled all my card, I drew some silver faux stitching lines around the house shapes and around these rectangular shapes and then using a font in the font converter I got the machine to write season's greeting on this layer and then I stuck all my card together just layered it all up onto my base card so I hope you found that helpful please give the video a thumbs up if you liked it don't forget to subscribe if you don't already do so Make sure the notification icon is turned on within your YouTube settings and that way you'll get notified when I post any live streams or when I post any more video tutorials. And I'll see you in the next video. Thank you.